Hi, we're going to revisit the lifeguard problem today, and now we're going to solve the problem analytically. We're going to find the minimum of the problem analytically. Now, if you don't remember what the objective function is, that's the, the time it takes for the swimmer or the uh, lifeguard to get from the starting point to the swimmer, go back and check out a previous video where we derived that. But here's the objective function. This is the time it takes as a function of where the lifeguard gets in the water. Okay, there's the time that the lifeguard spends running across the sand, and there's the time she spends in the water, getting to the swimmer. Okay, so x will be in meters and t, time will be in seconds, and this was 87.2, I think, 87.21, I think. Okay, so let's, let's draw a picture of this. And here's pretty much what the curve looked like. Okay? So here's the point where she gets in the water, and if this point right here will designate X star. Now that superscript star is what you see in optimization books and papers and things like that. That designates the minimum. That's the minimum point on the function. And if we go over here, that would be T star. Okay? So this is, this is how you read this plot. The slope at that point slope is zero. So that means t prime at x star equals zero. That's a very compact way of describing mathematically of, of writing that out. So if I knew what t, t prime was, if I knew what the derivative of this was, I could set that equal to zero and I could solve it. Now I'm going to show you how to do the derivative. It's going to be awfully hard to solve analytically, but I can show you how to solve it in MathCAD and MATLAB. So let's do that. I'm gonna. This is gonna be a, uh, an exercise in just product rule in uh, in taking derivatives. Now, this you can certainly write it out this way. I find it's easier to write this out in a slightly different form and start there. Now, in general, I'm not gonna ask you to sit here and grind these out by hand, but it's worth doing it by hand once or twice just to get back in practice. Okay, square root is the same thing as raising something to the one-half power. Now we get to use the power rule in, in uh, derivatives, and that's, that makes things a lot simpler. Okay, one over seven, that's just a constant. Now, when I have taken the derivative of something raised to a power, I take the, the exponent, push it down there, and subtract one from that. And then I have to take the derivative of whatever's inside those parentheses. Well, the derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of that is 2x. Okay, so there's that. Now let's do the same thing again. Now times 1 half, because I'm pulling that down. Okay. I and I still have to take the derivative of what's inside the uh, uh, parenthesis right there. Derivative of 50 squared is 0. And the derivative of 100 minus x squared, or x the quantity squared, is 2, 100 minus x. Now I have to take the derivative of that. Derivative of minus x is minus 1. Okay. So I've got it all. Let's clean it up now. Alrighty, let's see here. That and that cancel out. So I'm going to get x over 7. And I'm going to square that. So 50 squared is 2500 plus, okay now, let's see that and that cancel out. I'm going to bring the minus sign over. So that's going to be minus one half. This is going to appear in the, denom the, the numerator there. Okay. And that's going to be one. Actually, I'm going to, by, by pulling the minus sign over, I'm just going to flip this around. That'll, that'll be a little cleaner. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to bring that and multiply that through.
Okay, so I've got it, but I've got it in kind of a clunky form. Let's clean this up once more. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, I guess you can see that. That's fine. So last step here, I'm going to say x over 7 square roots of this minus x minus 100. I'm sorry, that's a plus now. 100 over 2 square root of 2,500 plus 1. Okay, and there you go. That's the derivative of that function. Now again, this is, this is a pretty straightforward uh, application of, of rules you learned in calculus class a while ago. And we're not going to do this a lot, but it's good to do it a couple, uh, by hand a few times to get back in practice and make sure we understand what the computer is doing. Because if we don't understand what the computer is doing, we have to just believe whatever comes out of it. We're basically playing a really bad computer game where we don't know the rules. That's not good. Okay, so there we have it. Let's move to MathCAD and MATLAB now, and let's see how to solve this on the computer. Okay, here we are back in MathCAD, and I've typed in the objective function for the lifeguard problem, and let's just make sure we've got it right here. I think it's right, but it's always good to draw a picture if you can. Double check and make sure that you've got everything correct before you move on. Never miss a chance to check your answer, gang. And that sure looks right. It looks like the minimum is about 87.2. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the derivative of this, set it equal to zero, and solve to show that we get 87.2. So to find the derivative, I'm going to let MathCAD do this uh, symbolically. I'm going to go up here and click on the, the calculus toolbar. Again, if you want to know how to turn the toolbars on, just go up to there. I have the calculus one tool turned on. So click there click there, set up the derivative, pull that up for me, and there it is. Now, I can, it, this is correct, this is this is defined, I can type, put a number in there and it evaluates, so dt, that function name, does exist. And this isn't some canned function in MATLAB, this is just a variable name I made up. But I want to see what this actually looks like, so I can go up here to where it says evaluate symbolically. If I click on that, now I'm missing a little bit here because this implementation of MATLAB doesn't refresh the screen as often as it should. So I'm going to hit Control R to refresh the screen. And there it is. Now it looks a little different than we had on the board. Uh, MathCAD did not divide through by 2. And it also seems to have reversed this, which looks like it would introduce a minus sign. But since it's squared, it doesn't matter. Well, hmm, let's try this another way. Let's go ahead and use a slightly different version. This is symbolic, but it allows for a keyword. And one of the keywords you can put in there is, spell it right, is simplify. And again, I'm going to hit Control R, and there it is. It has divided through by 2, and it's evaluated everything under the, uh, the square root sign right there. And this is also correct. These two expressions are equivalent. One's just a little more refined than the other one. So is this right? Well, it should be. I'm going to use a root function. Root, again, is where we set a uh, function equal to 0 and solve. And just like you'd guess, it's root you know, dt, whoops, t sub x. Tell it which variable you want it to use. And hit return. There it is, 87.2. And just to remind ourselves, I can minimize the objective function directly if I want. and I get the same answer. So there you have it. One note, in the root, you have to put sub x in there, and for minimize, you don't. It seems like one of those annoying little inconsistencies, but there you have it. OK, so there's how to solve the problem in MathCAD. Next, we'll solve it in MATLAB. OK, here we are again in MATLAB. We're going to solve the lifeguard problem again by setting the derivative of the objective function equal to 0 and finding x, which would be x star then. We're finding the minimum that way because the slope at the minimum is 0. By setting the, the slope equal to 0 and solving, we're going to find x star, which should be 87.208 approximately. 
So the first thing I've got to do is define the derivative of the objective function. And there's a couple of ways to do this. There's many ways to do everything in MATLAB. It's very, very versatile. It's very powerful. But it can get kind of complicated. There can be a lot of syntax. So it is possible for me to type in the objective function as a symbolic function and have the symbolic solver figure out the derivative for me. And in order to solve, as, uh, to find a, a number, I would have to convert that back over to a floating point function and then throw it at one of the equation solvers. And you certainly can do that. An example of that is in Appendix C of the Fundamentals of Optimization book. It's for this class. It's by Springer. Um, there's a lot of syntax there. So early on in the, in the class here, let's avoid that for now and let's stick with things that are a little more easy to uh, understand at first, especially if you're new to MATLAB. So I'm going to go ahead and define the derivative of the objective function as a, just a floating point function. So you can see it's not in the workspace yet. It hasn't been defined, but it is in the command history. This uh, I typed this in earlier, and I thought it would be easier to just pull that back from the command history rather than to uh, make you watch me type it in again. So if I type in D in a capital T, which is that variable name right there, and just hit the up arrow on my keyboard, that's something else I did earlier, see down there, there's the, the next instance, that's this right here. I'm actually working back up through this list. There it is right there. So I hit the up arrow twice to get that, and hit enter. Now it's in the workspace. Now MATLAB can work with it. So if I wanted, uh, again, if I wanted to find a value of this, I can go hit that and hit return. It actually calculates a numeric value for me. That's, that's a way of checking to make sure that that function is defined and it's in the workspace. I can use it. So now that I've got the function defined, I can use one of the canned MATLAB commands to find the root of the equation. Now the command I'm going to use is called F0, F-Z-E-R-O, and uh, you, can, uh, you can see there it pulls up the syntax for me. F-U-N stands for function, so whatever function I want to use, I'm going to type in D-T, that's the function I want to use, and I need to give it a starting point. Well, I'll give it a starting point of 0. It's not a very good starting point, but it's a starting point. Before I go ahead and evaluate here, I want to point out that well, I've been using the word root. We're going to find the root of that equation. Set the derivative equal to zero and solve. That's a root finding operation. There's actually another name for it. The, the root of an equation is also sometimes called the zero of the equation. So it's the same problem we always have. There's so many people who have helped develop modern mathematics that they sometimes come up with different names for the same thing, and this is one of those times. It's perfectly acceptable to call that the zero of an equation, and if you'd rather not call it the root, the folks at MATLAB decided to use the word zero instead of the word root, and that's absolutely fine. So if I hit return, I should get 87.208. So I got 87.2076, which rounds off to 87.208, and there you have it. In this series of three videos, we've, we've uh, set the derivative of the objective function equal to zero. We've shown how to find that derivative analytically. We've solved the problem in MathCAD, and now we've solved it in MATLAB.